All right, next speaker is Zook here. He's going to be talking. So let's please give him a big DEF CON welcome. Come on. Thank you. Uh, hello and welcome to my talk on ARM exploitation techniques. Thank you, crowd. I love you. Uh, hello and welcome to my talk on ARM exploitation technique. Uh, Thank you again. <laughs> Can you hear me? You in the back? All right, we got it. Uh, hello and welcome to my talk on ARM exploitation technique. I actually said it three times now. Uh, in this talk, I will cover exploitation technique on both ARM and x86 architecture uh, from scratch, actually. So if you've never done it before, uh, it's, it's the time to start, actually. Uh, this is my first DEF CON uh, ever. So I'm really excited to be here with you. Uh, it's, I'm, real, I'm really happy to attend this uh, great conversation, this great uh, event. Uh, well, I, I had a buddy uh, who had to go uh, yesterday. He couldn't stay today. So I promised him I'll, I'll take a photo of you while you scream DEF CON. So if you can do that for me, that would be awesome. Like five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to post it on, uh, on that blog right there so you can see yourself. Uh, I'm Isaac uh, Avram. My, my nickname is Zook. Uh, you can call me Zook if you love me. Uh, I work for uh, Samsung. Uh, I'm a researcher there. Uh, I do some neat research for them. I really like it. I'm also a partner at uh, PIA. PIA is a pre-incident assessment. Uh, just a penetration testing, uh, reverse engineering, custom stuff like that. You can follow me on Twitter under that account. It's actually a sticker name. I borrowed the name from. That's the blog. Uh, the, f the full presentation and the paper, which will have like more technical details, uh, will be will be there. Uh, the updated one, not the one in the city. It's it's quite not updated. It hasn't got any Android. Uh, info, so the updated one is going to be there in a few hours. Uh, for any requests, talks, whatever, dirty offers, uh, that's my email. Feel free. Uh, well, like I said, the presentation is not enough. Uh, you need, if you really want, uh, like, it's nice to know uh, exploitation techniques and stuff. Uh, if you want, like, real more technical details, you can see the paper. It's on the CD, but it's also will be in the website, the updated one. Uh, will be there in that website. All right. So that's what's going to be actually in this, uh, in this talk. Uh, we're going to start from the very beginning. And uh, all right, someone just told me to speak louder so everybody can hear me right there. All right, cool. Uh, like what's the calling convention why ARM uh, exploitation is different uh, from x86, uh, what we need to adjust in order to make our exploit work from x86 on ARM, uh, some local attacks, remote attacks, and uh, finally a demo on this Android phone. Uh, right, let's do it. So that's the best skills I can get in PowerPoint because all right. If if you don't like it, <laughs> just leave it because I, I can't get any better in in PowerPoint. Uh, anyway, why would someone want to hack a mobile phone or a ARM device or whatever? Let's let's stay on mobile phones. Uh, there's various reasons you want to do that. Uh, one of them is uh, just it's just like a regular computer these days. You can use it for botnets. You can make calls, send SMSs, that's, that's the, someone who wants to attack from remote. Uh, you can just charge him. You can do whatever you want. It's, it's a computer that can make calls. Uh, so that's it. Also, applications are very common these days. So if you download a malicious application for, let's say, a weather, someone that checks weather, uh, and it actually wants to use your Bluetooth or uh, send emails from you and stuff like that, and also it only requests uh, in the manifest, just permissions for the, uh, don't know, nothing, and then he exploits some uh, system APIs to privilege escalation and just use the Bluetooth model or, or your internet or your calls. Uh, someone can steal your calls, 
And there's also the user itself that would want to hack a mobile phone. Uh, it would want to do that to reveal some stuff that the mobile operator didn't allow him to do. Uh, you can see that in iPhones. A lot, a lot of people do that. All right, so after the very beginning, we'll, we'll cover uh, the status of uh, buffer overflows on x86. These days, you can see on x86 many uh, defenses uh, from buffer overflows. It's really hard actually to exploit uh, these days on x86 architecture. Uh, the stack and heap is not executable. Uh, you got stack cookies. Uh, ASLR is very, very, like, most of the places are randomized, very good. Uh, it's really hard to bypass, especially if you got all, all of the vectors. On ARM, uh, it's quite different. Uh, the architecture is different, so you have to adjust stuff. It's not fully working. Also, the stack in the heap, uh, well, they're not executable on most devices these days, uh, but y you can see ASLR uh, most of the time. There is a PAX patch uh, for a, a Linux platform it, a few months ago. So now you, c you can see ASLR being implemented, but it's not mainline yet. So let's cover uh, x86 red to libc attack. I'm just beginning from, from scratch. Uh, if, if you want to exploit uh, stack overflow on ARM architecture, uh, on uh, x86 architecture, it will be something like that. It's very easy to, can you see my mouse pointer? All right. It's very easy to exploit. You, you just put the buffer here. Let's say you want to slash bin slash sh to execute. Uh, it's just very easy. You, you put the buffer here. You override the EBP. It doesn't really matter actually because it's 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 good for uh, frame faking and more advanced attacks. But in this case, it's not. Uh, you just override the EIP with the system uh, function address. Uh, you can also put return address and you just push parameter on the stack. So you put your parameter. Uh, in the payload like that. It's very easy. I think x86 was meant to be hacked. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> look, look at that. You, you just can push parameters through the stack in the same payload. Uh, I think someone up there wanted us to hack the x86 uh, to make it easier somehow. Uh, all right, so for the demo, like I said, we would want to use the system functions. Just we'll execute our command and we want to execute slash bin slash sh. All right, um, it will not work on ARM uh, like that. It, it wasn't meant to be hacker friendly like x86. I think that's my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, you know, just don't. Also, why wouldn't it work on ARM? Because if it worked, we wouldn't have this uh, presentation right here. And uh, it's, it has different uh, calling conventions. And uh, it works differently because ARM assembly works differently. And we, we just want to cover that. So we're going to the technical part. Actually, I wanted, when I edited this presentation yesterday, I wanted to add uh, this girl. Uh, I want to do a break before the technical details. Just put girls with tits or something uh, so you can have a break before I'm going to technical details. But I decided to remove it because there are some girls in the crowd. So that's, I'll get killed or something. Uh, all right. So this is the basics of ARM assembly. That's what actually you need to know for this presentation. You can also always become better, that, that one. Uh, the ARM assembly is unlike uh, x86 assembly. In x86, if you want to push parameter, you can do it through the stack. Uh, in ARM, you just need to put it in the registers. So let's say if I wanted to put uh, slash bin sh in, in to push it somehow, I would need to put it on R0. And I can do it through the payload like that. So that's less sucker friendly. Also, there is uh, the registers can be edited. Like uh, PC is similar to EIP; it's the instruction pointer, and uh, you can edit it, it as is. Not like uh, x86; you can actually move address to PC, and will be the next instruction. Uh, what you also need to know is, well, R0 to R3 are the most most important 
uh, registers. Uh, the rest, R13 is the stack pointer, and uh, LR link register is uh, R14. R15 is, the, like I said, the EIP of ARM. It's PC. So let's start it exploiting. All right. So read to libc overrides the return address and pass parameters to vulnerable function, but we, we can't pass parameters on the vulnerable function because we need to store it on the R0 register, for instance, in this one. So we are quite screwed, and uh, we can only override existing variables from local function. So it it's usually depends on which function you are uh, has the vulnerability in it. All right, and we can also override the PC, the program counter. So that's what we'll use in order to get control of the full control of the application. So there is no really uh, read to libc attack on ARM. We'll have to make some adjustments. So, all right. Why is it actually possible? So when entering a, a vulnerable function, the the pushed uh, parameter. It's usually it's not most it's not all cases, but it's most of them. The R14 is being popped into the PC at the end of the function. So if you can overwrite the R14 uh, at the end of the function, it will be, po be being popped to the PC, the R15. So you get control of the code. If we can control it, we can own it, actually. So let's let's do it like a POC with in a in a in a program that is very hacker friendly, all right? It gets the PC, uh, right? It gets the buffer here, and uh, the stack pointer is pointing to the beginning of our buffer. It's very convenient. Our zero is beginning, is pointing to the beginning of the buffer, also very convenient. So let's just put a command here, and uh, after we overwrite the PC, just we'll put there the system address of of the function. So we'll see PS is being uh I'm actually on my screen. All right, it's mirrored. Uh you can see PS uh, function is being executed. Uh but that's that's a lie because that's that that's is very convenient uh hacking friendly program that I made specially for that. So that's not a real life scenario. Uh, anyway, uh that that's the POC that it can work. Okay, let's face it. It's not real life scenario. Uh, in order to have that scenario, we need a function that returns void. That after the overflow, nothing happens. Uh, so our zero will not be deleted, and uh, it should be small. Uh, there's another problem with that. It, the buffer should be small, uh, like 16 bytes, in order to have a free space of the system function, not using the same stack pointer. Uh, space, so it will not override each other. So there is actually almost no chance in the world for that to happen. And if it happened to you, you're very lucky. It's like winning the jackpot in Wheel of Fortune outside. So yeah, you don't want you don't want that scenario. All right. So what 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 we need actually for a successful expo exploitation? Uh, we need several stuff, so let's do it. We need parameter adjustments and variable adjustments. Parameter adjustments will be just uh, register adjustments, R0 to R3. We must modify that in order to continue exploiting and do whatever we want. We also would like to get back the control to PC. So after we execute some command, we want still control the, the, the flow of the buffer. And we also might want to do a stack lifting, because like I said, uh, you don't have to count on that the the buffer to be 16 bytes or if it's a longer buffer you're screwed you don't want to do that in the in the 16 bytes you just get uh 4 bytes uh of of buffer that you can execute and that's not enough unless it's a, a local attack so like everybody is just making uh attacking names so we just made a new one because uh, it's i don't know i don't really Put a lot of thought of that, but it's just mix of uh, a lot of stuff. Return oriented programming, return to, return to libc, stack lifting, parameter adjustments, and that's it. I mean, it's not really a name; it's just like a joke. Like everybody in the security community just make up names. So, this is for Zook, but don't tell anyone, right? 
So I won't put my name outside. Like it. So how can we control the R0, R1? Yeah, you're probably fascinated about that. So like amazingly fascinating. Uh, R0, yeah. Uh, all right, so we'll need to actually jump into a pop instruction. We'll do uh, return-oriented programming. There have been several return-oriented programming in uh, Black Hat uh, this year, and I think in DEF CON also. Uh, very interesting. You can put that with this attack and do some more complex attacks. Uh, you can do actually whatever you want with that. So we'll need to jump into a pop instruction, uh, which also pops the PC, or we can control it later. Uh, and we can control the R0 or maybe more, all right? So I just looked uh, like a quick regular expression on uh, libc. And you can see like LDM is like pop in, uh, in Intel. It's similar. To, I don't want to get into details what's different. Uh, but you can see it's, it's popping R0 and R1. So if we jump right here, this address, uh, we'll be able to pop R0 and R1. We'll put any values that we want in there. Also, you can see the stack pointer is lifting itself by 12 bytes. So there will be actually R0, R1, and extra four bytes. And then you can see pop PC. So we get four bytes of junk. So what we want to do after the buffer, we got AAAs, uh, R4, R11. It well it depends how it's compiled. And then we'll be jumping. Actually, it's a mistake here. It's uh, not 44. It's 48. So we'll be jumping here to the LDM instruction, and then we'll pop R0. We'll put it inside uh, the slash bin slash sh address. R1 is not really matter for that one, but it's just four bytes. Uh, and then we got four bytes of junk. It, it doesn't really matter what you put there. And then we'll call system. So that's the original idea of how you can control the, the R0 and R1 instructions. But that's only good for uh, local attackers. So let's, we can do some more complex uh, return oriented programming uh, payloads, but let's just keep it that way in the system function. It's very easy. Uh, so if we can control R0 to point to a relative path to be in the beginning of our buffer, we can actually put any command. Let's say we want to put like netcat with reverse shell. We can do that if R0 is pointing to the beginning of our buffer. Uh, so what we need in this one is actually to have like R0 to point out the relative color to the beginning of the path, uh, and then we'll call system. But like I said before, we, we need the, the size of the buffer to be a certain type. So it will not work because it's for short buffer we only get D words of unwritten commands. Uh, for long buffer we get none. So that's not enough. We have to stack lift. So that's another uh, thing in our attack we need to remember. Sometimes we just gotta stack lift ourselves in order to execute the full payload without being controlled by, by the lack of the creators of uh, libc uh, and the one who compiled it. So ARM commands are actually very easy, very nice for exploitation. There are several variations of the same stuff. Uh, you can do many instructions. It's much more uh, better than x86 in my opinion. So let's see what we can do in that one. We can abuse the current stack pointer. Uh, we can just lift ourselves and, uh, and then just go back. All right. So let's just a quick look. The wprintf function epilogue, you can see that you can pop LR if we jump right here. We'll jump right here. And then the SP adds to itself uh, 16 bytes. And then uh, the next instruction will be BXLR. BX means branch. With, uh, it checks the first bit, but in, in this case, just say it's like a, a call, uh, advanced call. So like a x86 advanced call. So we'll get our stack lifted by 16 bytes just by coming to that one. And then we'll put a new instruction right here where we want to jump next time. So we can jump again and again and again and lift our stack. We only need to lift our stack uh, 384 bytes so the system will not override ourselves and we can execute whatever payload we want. So if we do that, our payload will look like something like that. Like netcat reverse shell, 
And uh, that one is actually very important because it ignores the rest of the command until a night a null byte. And uh, then we'll overwrite the function and just go back and forth, back and forth until we lifted enough of the stack uh, and execute. And, and then we, when we finish, we'll just go uh, to our zero adjustment. Maybe that was a better idea to just put it right here. But anyway, uh, we'll go to our zero adjustment. Again, our one adjustment, four bytes of junk, and then we'll call system. And we can execute whatever we want, whatever size we want of the buffer. So, another interesting uh, uh, parts to adjust parameters will be uh, I just seen it at, on M count epilog. You can see that you can pop any uh, R0 to R3, whatever you want, and R11, LR, and then you branch to LR. So, you can pop and adjust multiple parameters in the same jump, in the same return oriented, uh, in the same widget uh, of this one. Uh, what we want to do next would be, uh, as a remote attackers, would be actually to uh, enable the stack and execute whatever we want. Uh, that can be easily done uh, by calling mprotect and changing the, uh, our, our place in the memory to be executable and then we'll have to jump on it. There is a good uh, section of that on Perk Magazine, on the alphanumeric arm shell codes. So, oh, uh, yeah. All right, so yesterday I was very bored. It was like 3 a.m. and, uh, well, that's the Android device I'm going to uh, demo on that one. Actually, we went pretty fast. Uh, well, it's cool. So let's see if we can get a shell out of Android application. Uh, there are several limitations on uh, on Android devices. Uh, first of all, you don't want it to be a, like a Dalvik application. You want it to be a native uh, Android application, for instance, uh, something that had been compiled with NDK. NDK is the native uh, development kit for uh, Android, and uh, well, it's actually pretty hard to compile uh, dynamically. There's lots of tutorials in the internet, but it took some time. It's it's not user friendly. And also, Android libc had been compiled differently. Uh, the bin sh is actually nothing in in Android. There is slash system slash bin sh. They recompiled their libc, uh, and they did. I, I don't know if they did it by mistake or uh, by luck, but like by mistake or they really meant to do it, but libc uh, of Android is much more harder to exploit because it has no uh, pop R0 instructions and stuff like that. So you have to be a little bit more, a uh, uh, little bit m more complicated to do that. But it's it's the same technique, so it works on every ARM architecture. So we don't get uh, things uh, on R0 immediately. But we'll, we can do that, and the slash bnsh is uh, actually on a different path. But uh, for instance, this, the system function is is being implemented that it executes uh, execve function uh, with the full path of the bnsh in regular libc. So it has to to do that here also. So they just modify the the variable and they just put slash b system slash bnsh. So that string should also be in the same uh, library. So we're cool with that. All right, so don't worry, uh, it's all the same uh, also here in Android. Uh, we'll get the slash system bnsh to r0 and we'll not pop r0 but we'll do a trick to do that. As you can see that, I, I hope that some people can see the trick here. Uh, I'll give you like 10 seconds to think about it before I say what it is. Uh, it's it's the malinfo function, just function in uh, Android libc that I took from uh, that one, and you can see that you can pop to that. That's a pop instruction if you're not familiar with uh, ARM uh, architecture. Uh, so you can actually pop to R4 and get the PC back. So let's do that. We'll pop to R4 instruction so we can control the R4 uh, register. That's the first step we want to do. 
So after we control the R4 register and we control the PC, which means the next instruction, we might want to go here. So we just control the R4 instruction and then we move the R4 to R0. And then we can put some more four bytes of junk on R4 and we can go to system. So our payload will look like that. If that's if that thing is uh the LDM MFD uh R4, we'll just put the slash system slash bin sh address in R4 and then we'll jump like you can see it's four bytes uh offset between that one. So we'll just jump to the first instruction uh and that will move the R4 to R0 and then we can put some more four bytes of junk that will be on uh the next R4, the, the second phase of this attack and then we'll go to system. So well I'm quite, I did it too hairy. I, I was too hairy to do the conversation. So let's show the demo then. So what I did here uh, was actually compiling, uh, yeah you can read it, uh, a native application for uh, Android, just to run C application on Android. What it do is uh, just calling a vulnerable function uh, that's after the function. So you're not supposed to see that if the payload that succeeded or uh, the program had crashed because after the function we'd get a segmentation fault. So we go to the stack o, uh, which means stack overflow and we got two, two buffers, a small buffer and a big buffer. Uh, what we do is actually read from uh, that place slash SD card slash buffer and uh, we'll just put the stuff in it uh, on the small buffer via memcpy. I used memcpy because there is actually, I think there was a null in uh, one of the parameters. So they were lucky on this version but it was an honest mistake by them I think. Uh, so I, I used memcpy to, to copy the buffer to the small buffer. Small buffer is 16 bytes and the big buffer is, uh, I don't know, 256. So what, what should happen if we succeed in this one is actually getting a, a shell. I, I put a, my shell code is uh, on, on that place and it has the same technique I described here. So what we're going to do is put AAAs and then we're going to adjust the R4. We're going to jump again. Uh, we're going to adjust the R4 with slash system slash bin sh. We're going to jump again to uh, the move instruction. So the R0 will contain, so the R0 will contain our, uh, our uh, parameter and then we'll jump back and do the system. All right, so let's do it. That's this device right here. It's the G1, I think. The only Android device I had on my desk. Let me find it. I was a bit drunk yesterday. Uh, no, not really. Um. All right. So that's our function. That's our uh, binary. Uh, it has the same technique. It's, it's just the C code that you just saw earlier. Uh, it was a nightmare to compile it on uh, Android. But here we go. I'm going to execute it and we're going to get a shell. So we got our shell, like you can see. And if you can see what executed is the buff one executed a shell that executed a shell. Uh, so we made it. We won. And <laughs> victory. <laughs> 
All right, I feel like dumb. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you. And so we, we actually made it. And when we're going to exit uh, the binary, we're supposed to see uh, a segmentation fault, and it's not going to to get into the printf that after the function, because the path has been the, the path of the execution had been altered. So we're going to exit out of the shell. And if it's if I'm not joking with you and it's supposed to see a segmentation fault. So we just stop it and now, all right. So uh, we did it, we got a shell. Uh, that's, that was the le least complex one, but it, the, the, this stuff works. So that's the whole point of the talk, right? So you can do whatever you want actually on, on Android. So I'm about to finish right now. Uh, I did it a bit earlier. You might want to catch some other talk anyway. Uh, the buffer overflows on ARM are actually a real threat. Uh, we need some more security mechanism set up on that one. And uh, like fully ASLR on a mainline, we want to do that. And uh, if, you con if you're writing an applications for ARM, uh, don't count on it on being like unexploitable because it can be exploitable like, in, like you can see. Uh, sometimes it can be even easier. Sometimes it's harder. It's not a hacker's heaven like x86, but it can be done. Uh, if you want to prevent it, we, we want uh, not a single unrandomized static code and uh, stack cookies and like the most vectors we can to prevent buffer overflows, the better. If anyone got questions, I'll be at uh, Q&A uh, 114. Uh, you can download the full talk and the the paper, like I said. And if anyone wants a business card or something, I got like a full pack here. Uh, anyway, thanks. Special thanks to some guys, uh, Ilan uh, from Samsung Israel, and uh, Moshe Verd and Matthew Kapitner from uh, Matthew from uh, Inguardians. Helped me a lot. Some references, and that's it. Okay. Thank you.